All right, everyone. So uh, in this next tutorial, we're going to take all the lessons we learned before. We're going to uh, show a new way of animating a character doing like a walk and run cycle using the motion capture data. But instead of dealing with the hassle of messing with the hips, uh, moving back and forth in the graph editor and, and going back and forth and baking the actions, uh, we're going to um, take the, uh, we're going to remove the hip um, forward movement and, uh, animation data completely and we're going to parent this object to a, a null and then we're going to match it up to the movement of the original armature. So I've already gone ahead using the techniques I showed you in the previous tutorials. I've gone ahead and I've created uh, the, you know, mapped the walk cycle animation onto this guy. You can see in the background we got the run uh, animation in the background as well which we might use later. But uh, everything's just like it was nor before. He's moving forward and of course it just gets the end. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select all this. Uh, I've done all the techniques. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, for one thing, like I said, we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. I'm gonna select just the hips. We're gonna go in the graph editor and open up the uh, data here. And we're gonna find just the movement that goes, makes the guy go forward, the forward movement. So that looks pretty flat. That looks flat, there it is. It's pretty obvious that the Z location data is what's making the guy move forward. So I'm gonna select all those and hit X and delete those keyframes. So now he's just walking in place. So we'll go back to the graph editor, dope sheet, uh, select all those um, and I'm gonna call this walk in place. So we have him walking in place. So I'm gonna push this action onto, down onto the NLA. So we'll go to the nonlinear animation and then I'll hit uh, N on the keyboard to bring up the panel, info panel. Go to the strip tab. Uh, under action clip, we'll make him repeat the action three times like we did before. So now he'll be walking uh, three times. But of course, he's not moving forward at all. He's just, he's just spinning his wheels. So now we're going to find a way to match. What we need to do is we need to match the movement to the... Uh, to the movement of the original uh, motion capture data because we don't want the feet to slide. We could just manually move this guy forward, like kind of eyeball it and stuff, but uh, we want to have control over it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and parent this guy. I'm going to go back to the beginning frame. I'm going to go ahead and sh shift A to add an empty. I'll make it a sphere so it's easy to see. Go to this empty tab and spin this down so it's easy to see. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, select my armature, shift select that, and control P to parent, and keep the transform. Okay, uh, so now let's go back to the dope sheet and we're gonna match the movement of this empty object that he's parented to, to uh, the, uh, the movement, the forward movement of the um, original motion capture data. So first thing we need a, a keyframe on the first uh, frame. I'm on frame zero right now, so I, I and make a location and rotation keyframe. And let's select this guy and go to the last frame that he has uh, animation data for, which is 30. I'll go to my side view to make this easy to see. And then we just line this up, move it forward and line this up until this guy matches up as close as possible with the motion capture data. Right. It probably won't be exact, but that's okay. And we're gonna hit I again. Let's see, I should have had, if I go to timeline, it should be set, there we go. Set auto key on, okay. So now, when I go through this, it should pretty much match it. It does, um, of course, he's this, uh, we're gonna have to go in the graph editor and kind of tweak this a little bit, but uh, but you, as you can see here, it's pretty much matching. Let's go into the graph editor, which is our next step anyway. And let's go ahead, find that forward motion, which is this. In this case, it's the Y location. And I'm going to select these two keyframes and hit T on the keyboard and hit linear so that there's no ease in and ease out. All right. So now it looks like he's moving forward. And as you can see, it looks almost exactly like the original uh, animation data. He's, um, there's no foot slipping. If we go to the side view, the feet are, that's the most important part. The feet are not slipping. But now when we get to the end, when we get to frame 30 and we get to the end, he still just, you know, he stops moving. So we want him to move all, you know, keep moving forward 
all the way to the end of this animation, which is like frame 88 uh, or so. And um, so in order to do that, it's pretty simple. We, with the uh, empty selected, with the channel that is making the character move forward selected, we go to channel, we go to extrapolation mode, and we say linear. And then you'll see that even before and after the actual keyframes, it has a straight line. So now when we go forward, he just keeps moving. And he keeps moving at the same steady pace that he was before. So we'll get to frame, I think it's like 88 or so. And I'll create another keyframe. But if we look at this graph editor, everything's moving. So now we have all the benefits of the um, original motion capture data, but we also are able to animate this guy independently. So in this case, we could also move this this path. So for example, we could uh, take this, we could, instead of him moving just straight, we can move him over to the side and have him kind of animate like this, okay? And then we can find, I'm gonna delete this keyframe here, we don't need that. We'll go to frame like 40 or so, which is about halfway there. Let's go to about here. We'll have him move kind of straight for a while and then turn. And you'll have to tweak this. It's like anything else. There's tweaking involved no matter what. Uh, we can go and look at the motion path of this object. Calculate that motion path so we see, you know, what's going on here with this character. With his motion path. So make we'll make it so that uh, it looks more natural. All right. But now we've got a guy who we can... You know, like I said, we're gonna have to tweak this and stuff so that he uh, he matches the movement of this uh, this path. But uh, you probably have to go in to each uh, part of this, make sure that he's moving along this path correctly. There you go. That looks a lot more uh, you know normal. All right. So now we we're able to take this guy and the feet aren't slipping. Everything is moving correctly. All right. Everything's moving how, how you would expect. And you can manipulate this, this character. You're getting the advantages of uh, the, the fact that the feet don't slip, the timing is correct and everything like that, and yet you're able to move him anywhere you want pretty much, all right? Uh, so now, uh, let's say we want him to take off at the end. We want this run animation to happen um, when he gets to the end of this. Uh, uh, let's see here. What was it, frame 88? So what you do here is you line up this run animation with this, uh, with the end of this path. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and then we'll go to frame 88, which is where this takes off. I'm gonna move all these keyframes over so that they start later on. They start when we want this kind of handoff to happen between the run and the uh, <clears throat> between the run and the walk. So now he's going to go from here. He's going to start transitioning into his run. All right, and we make sure that the you know these two characters are kind of lined up correctly, their pelvises and stuff. If you turn on in front, you'll be able to see it better. Line this up. Especially so that the hips or pelvis areas, they have to match up as, as, as much as possible. That's where all the forward momentum comes from. All right. Oops. And then you simply, all right, he runs forward to there. I think it's about frame one, 109. So now we match this up with this. All right. And now his, of course, we'll have to bake that into the uh, NLA. When he gets to the end of this, we'll add that, which we haven't done yet. You know, it's just like in that last tutorial I showed you. Um, when he gets to the end, we're going to add that run animation to the uh, nonlinear animation system. And I, I don't have time to do that right now, but I've shown you in the past how that's done. But then what will happen is now... Uh, It'll it'll still match when you uh, put the run animation into the NLA um, because we did the exact same thing we did before. The timing 
uh, will match. He'll go from walk, and then he'll go to run, and the feet shouldn't slide at all because everything should match correctly and stuff. And again, you'll probably have to tweak it a little bit in the uh, in the nonlinear animation or in the graph editor. You'll probably have to tweak things a bit, uh, but um, you know, it's worth uh, being able to have this much control and yet be able to have the um, you know the the base the basis of the uh, motion capture data as as your uh, as your guide to keep the feet from slipping and to make the uh, the movement look correct and natural. All right, so I hope this tutorial helps you out.